कहता कि मेरा मन नहीं करता है इस भाषण का समर्थन करना है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू ऑनरेबल मेंबर श्री तिरुचि शिवाजी थैंक यू मिस्टर वाइस चेयरमैन sir i raise to support the motion of thanks to the honorable president for the address he has delivered to both houses of parliament moved by my esteemed colleagues madam geeta and seconded by mr molik both of whom are not now here in the house as per the conventions both of them are but as per the conventions we do our duty of thanking the president sir in the process of my speech <coughs> however much i tried i hardly find anything to appreciate his entire speech to the members of parliament except two things one he quoted a couplet from tirukkural and another is from dr babu sahib and <coughs> ambedkar other these two things i think nothing is to appreciate or really see his speech <laughs> the bedtime stories of the children are built on maximum imagination but what they are telling now is exceeds even bedtime stories nothing is in practice sir let me quote what the president in his address told about baba saheb ambedkar my quote my ideal would be a society based on liberty equality and fraternity democracy is not merely a form of government it is essentially an attitude of respect and reverence towards one's fellow men so it's only in letter and not in spirit so i am rem reminded of the famous maxim about democracy by the people for the people and of the people yes this government was elected by the people but it's conveniently forgot its promise for working the people and forgot that it should be a government of the people all the policies and actions of this government are anti federal and anti secure sir our founder leader anna when he assumed the office of chief minister his first interview in delhi the journalist asked him what is your economic policy anna said tap the rich and pat the poor that was a very famous uh, policy that he uh, told the people and to the entire country but now this government is tapping the poor and patting the rich sir when you say the gst collection is 140000 crore in one month who has paid that the poor and the middle class people for whatever they buy whatever they live however they live they pay tax to the government but what has happened the government instead of addressing very core issues the crumbling msme sector the impact of the covid the increase in the essential commodities the enormous increase 69 times in one year the petroleum products the government has earned 4.91 crore lakh crore in by way of this from 2014 this government has earned 25 lakh crores by way of hiking the petroleum products instead of addressing all these issues you are prioritizing to fighting off the minorities rights values and beliefs so it's very saddening it is an agrarian country economy basically india is an agricultural country but now it is becoming a corporate country what happened to our farmers they were sitting in the hot summer bitter cold and the rains for one year because of your farm acts and you repealed it only because of the five state elections anybody would accept that it is not out of concern towards the farmers that too after they sacrifice 700 lives the government should have been empathetic not even sympathetic empathetic when you say uh, dr baba sahib is ambedkar that we should be uh, um, uh, respect and reverence towards one fellow man the government's duty is to protect and save every life of this uh, citizen in this country whereas 700 lives were lost during that agitated struggle but the government at last repeal that too without a discussion in the house but what is the result 
or they happy about it. Yesterday, the Samyukta Kisan Morcha, who have fought for the farmers, have given a press release. Government betrays farmers once again. Budget exposes empty promises of government on MSP and doubling farmers' income. Because the government said we would increase the farmers' income by 200 percent. But now it is not so. They said by 2022, we have reached 2022, but the farmers' income have not been increased. Their inputs cost have increased. The DAP and urea, which was 1,300, is now 2,000 rupees. Which was 700 rupees is 1,500 rupees. Whereas the MSP has not been increased. The producer, see, basically 80 percent of the country are basically agriculturists. During the economic recession, India survived only because of two things. One is public sector and the other is agriculture sector. Even during the COVID pandemic, India had food sufficiency because of our agriculture, but you are killing it. So also the public sector. See, you are giving 5G to the private sectors, but not 4G, even, even 4G to BSNL and MTN. It is a silent way of killing the public sector, BSNL and MTNL. So everyone would migrate from BSNL to the private sector when they are, of course, uh, when everyone is living in a digital world, we, we are for uh, 5G, whereas they are not even able to provide 4G. They have enough infrastructure. The infrastructure of the BSNL is being utilized by other private uh, networks. Yes, you're right. But you are giving them 5G, so what is your uh, intention actually? You are patting them like anything. The LIC, which has got an asset of 34 lakh crores and which he is, of course, uh, sharing its profit to its policyholders. It gives dividend to government, but you are going to kill it. You take the money that only policyholders are protected only by LIC, and you are going to take the money and fulfill the pockets of the corporates. So what is going on in this country? See, India is said to become the youngest country. The largest democracy is going to be the youngest country in the world. In what sense? 64 percent of its population is going to come under the working age group. What are the plans you have got? When you introduced the Make in India program, you said that 5 crore people are employed, we will make it 10 crore. But now it is 2.5 crore. You are assuring yesterday in the budget that we, are, we will give uh, 60 lakh jobs in five years. That is 12 lakh jobs in one year. And the finance minister very happily says it is a blueprint for 25 years. <laughs> and prime minister comes and says about it is for 100 years. Sir, what are they talking and what are, whom, to whom they are talking? The poor are becoming poorer. The rich are becoming richer. The richer are now becoming corporates. That is what we witness in this country now. See, the numbers very clearly say, according to the numbers released by the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, on 14th January 2022, not much earlier, the provisional annual rate of inflation is 13.56% for the month of December 2021, whereas in 2020 it was only 1.95%. It is that statistics. This is the inflation condition. Essential commodities are hiking. People's income is not there. And your way of handling many things, people are suffering. They don't have jobs. How are you going to meet the unemployment? You don't uh, address those issues, whereas you are talking something else. You are patronizing the corporates. And uh, so also, the inflation is borne by whom? The middle class and the lower sections. One. What happened to the MSME? When it was crumbling and it was when expected a dire need of a boosting, it, severed, it suffered a severe blow for, because of demonetization and the hasty implementation of GST. And the state surrendered their sovereignty of collecting taxes, but the promise that was given by the union government that it would give its due share to the government has not yet been. The due share has not yet been. Many states, even my state is coming and asking. <laughs> Many states, the uh, representatives here would know that the GST share from the due from the government has not reached them. Then what, what are you doing with the collected money? You are only waiving the NPAs of corporates. 
See, as an ordinary poor student who gets an education loan, if he doesn't pay after a few years, he is being harassed. He is brought under MPA, he is brought under Sibyl, and they say you cannot claim any loan across the in India in any bank, anywhere. So a poor boy who gets a 4 lakh loan who is not able to return that is being harassed, whereas corporates who have got thousands of crores of rupees are being waived means uh, what is the policy this government is adopting? That's what I said. You are tapping the poor and patting the rich. This is not a socialist country. You are scared of many words, as leader of opposition said. You are scared of many names and many words. Socialism, secularism, federalism, you are all scared of all those words. Sir, these are all very, very important things. We are not just accusing, alleging charges. These are what is happening in this country. When a government is elected, its duty is to take the country forward than it was. But it is dragging it backwards. India, which is thickly populated, and the people mostly who are young and who are poor, are not being taken care of. So what is the future? This so, sir, and uh, I have to highlight some very two important, three important things. See, in my state, Tamil Nadu, Fishermen, the plight of fishermen is a continuous process. It is second what we are talking today. On 31st of this month, January, 21st, 21 fishermen from Nagapatnam and Puducherry have been arrested by the Sri Lankan Navy. Three boats have been seized. Already 68 have been arrested and thanks to our, the intervention or initiation of our Chief Minister, Mr. M.K. Stalin, and of course, the external affairs minister, they have been released, but we are waiting for repatriation. And now these 21 fishermen and three boats are seized, and we do not know the condition, what is going to happen. So all through the year, fishermen, when they are imprisoned in Sri Lanka, their families are languishing here. So we have been suggesting the union government has to find a permanent resolution, a solution for this. Yesterday also, our leader, uh, Mr. Stalin, has written a letter, find a solution to this. You cannot just every time they will arrest, we will go uh, have a talk. So let the fishermen's issue has to be settled very fast. You give priorities to such issues. You are not doing that. Mm. Rather, you are attempting to encroach the powers of the state. You, are, uh, you have got an aversion towards some region, some languages, anti-lingual, anti-region. India is famous for multi uh, diversity in, uh, in, in, in its uh, unity in diversity. But it is not in practice. Uh, some languages are totally dispensed of. Hindi is being imposed this way and that way. I even represented to the Home Minister with a genuine representation that in CRPF, for non-paramedical stuff, just uh, uh, table boys, sweepers, and uh, uh, cooks, the qualification is 10th standard. But the examination is only in Hindi and English. You cannot expect a student from a non-Hindi speaking state who has studied just up to 10th standard to appear in English. So what we suggested, let all these examinations should be at least in regional languages, if at all. Ah, as far. Recognize in the 8th schedule of the Constitution, 22 languages are there. Do that in that. So you have to not just in lip service you say we support, we, we encourage other languages. No, you are actually killing other languages. So that was another thing we put them. See the Republic Day Parade, a very, very uh, ceremony which all are uh, celebrating and especially this is the 75th year. And all the years, all the states will not give represent, get representation, we are aware of that, but this is a special 75th year. The Tamil Nadu government gave, gave seven designs. The theme was Tamil Nadu's participation in the freedom struggle. Hmm. There were four rounds of scanning by an expert committee. They said it's expert committee. Expert committee has not come down from the sky. It's only constituted by you. The committee constituted by you drafted the national education policy, which was not accepted by even the academicians. So also this expert committee Three stages it approved. We have given uh, the history of Rani Velinachyar, the first ever queen who have 
won back a territory which was lost to the British. Everyone has lost and have died. But she was the only person who regained the territory which she lost to the British. And so also Bardia, everyone knows, a patriotic uh, poet. And Vivo Chathambarnar, who first uh, launched the uh, Sudeshi steam navigation. And Marudu brothers, who helped Velinachia. See, all these things were not approved, saying that it is unacceptable. Where can we go and say? So I was watching the Republic Day Parade on TV. Oh, anything better would have been there. But I saw only saffron clad saints walking and on the tableau. Why are you rejecting us? It has been happening for long that South Indian, especially Tamil Nadu, the patriots or anyone, is not recognized. Why all these years? Again, the Chief Minister wrote to the Prime Minister himself. Sir, take care, please. It's very important. They didn't allow. But uh, there is a proverb. Just because concealing a comb, you cannot stop the marriage. So you didn't uh, accept our proposal in the Republic Day Parade. What our Chief Minister did, you know? He just arranged the rally of the same tableau across Tamil Nadu, everywhere, all the districts. It goes to every street. It reaches the rural areas. So had it been here, it would have been for some minutes. Now it is going on for days, uh, telling our people all these things. See, I have even spoken in this house that the uh, untold uh, stories of these pe people who have been hidden in history should be taught in the schools. Only one more point, sir. Uh, another of my colleagues would speak uh, later with some points. I got only one more. Sir, another in the recent uh, amendments that have been done in the IAS cadre, I, I, uh, All India Services cadre, the government has done. What it has done, as it was, as it was earlier in existence, hereafter it won't be. What? The central government, without the consent of the state government, can call any IAS, IPS, IO officer to its service. Sir, this is again transgressing into the rights of the states. Correct. Correct. How can you do that? <clears throat> On whose authority? It's a federal country. Did you consult any of these people, any of the states? No. There is a group of former officers of the All India Service. Around 100 have given a very, very clear statement. They have said, in the federal structure of the Union of India, the Union and the states exist as distinct and separate entities, though they work in tandem to subserve common constitutional objectives. Maintaining this balance is critical to good governance. Sir, they came to power saying, maximum, minimum government, maximum governance. But now the government is maximum, governance is very minim, minimal. No governance. <laughs> no governance. <laughs> he knows better. Gujarat <laughs> Gujarat. <laughs> <laughs> the proposed amendments to the cadre rules of all the three AIS, All India Services, seek to working the state to be withdrawn from the services in the state of the allotment and uh, hits at the very core of the constitutional scheme of Indian federalism. So this is not a creation of the executive, this All India Service. It is by the constitution itself. Their experience in the state would help. But if at all you take them here, they would be serving only the center and they would lose interest in the states. And the states would also hereafter will suspect the uh, all India service officer. They would rely more on their own selected state officers. This is not an indication of federalism. This is not good at all. Whatever you do is snatching. You, you, you enact draconian laws with UAPA. You put under, uh, impri you pr imprison the social activities and minorities. And so also taking away the rights. Sir, so simply, I would like to sum up with only one thing. What is going on in this country after this party has taken up uh, uh, power, uh, assumed power, and the president also has addressed? I could simply say that democracy is in peril. Secularism is at stake. Federalism is targeted. State rights encroached and transgressed. Economy shattered. Minorities unsafe. Public sectors crushed. This is the experience of us, nothing else. I will just say only one thing, our Anna, 
founder Anna said when he spoke in the same house, carry on, but remember. From your seat, he spoke from where oh, you Oh, great. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Jairam Ramesh said that from where I am speaking now because the COVID is was the place where my founder leader Anna was speaking. He said, carry on, but remember. Carry on. People have given you a mandate, but remember, the people are watching you. Yeah. Two years after, they will teach you a lesson. Yeah. All those who are suffering will say what they have to. Yadi in Kannir, Kuriya Vale in Tamil. The tears of the poor is much sharper than the sword. Thank you very much. Oh, wow.